Hello everyone. Welcome to our journey into the world of chemistry and machine learning. Today we are going to have some fun exploring data from the field of chemical sciences. Imagine it like solving a cool mystery using computers and data. We will be building a smart computer model to help us understand and discover new things in chemistry. It's like turning data into insights that can change the game in the world of chemistry. So join me in this exciting adventure where we make science and technology to create something awesome. Let's get started. Before we start coding, let me give you a brief outlook of what you would be expecting from these series of videos. The first step would be generating dataset. The dataset that I am using is Delaney solubility dataset which has smile strings in it and Meyer log of solubilities. So in order to predict solubilities, we need descriptors. So what I'm going to do is use a Modred library in Python for generating various 2D and 3D descriptors. Then we will move on to data preprocessing step where we will see if there are any missing values or non-numerical values in our data set. And we will try to see what we can do with them. Then we'll do some data analysis. Now, with all these descriptors, it would be difficult to analyze each and every descriptor in a data set. Uh, so we will see how we can shortlist uh, our list of descriptors and uh, keep our analysis to just few descriptors. Since there would be many descriptors in our data set, we will try to decrease the number uh, of these descriptors by using various dimensionality reduction techniques such as TSNE and principal component analysis. Finally, we will be building our machine learning model using advanced algorithms. Now, machine learning models are known for being black box, but there are algorithms out there which can extract descriptors contributing most to the development of the model. And uh, we will see if we can use this algorithm and identify the most important descriptors um, which helps us in building the model. Basically, our aim would be to build a interpretable machine learning model. And throughout the series, we would be visualizing our data with the help of matplotlib and seaborn libraries. Uh, so let's go to the Google Colab notebook and see how we can achieve all that with the help of Python. So we are at the uh, Google Colab notebook. Uh, the first step would be installing Modred and RDKit libraries using pip install. And then we will move on to uh, importing various libraries and modules from RDKit and Modred. Along with that, I will be importing pandas and numpy uh, for our data manipulation and seaborn and matplotlib for uh, data visualization. I'm gonna be importing warning module and uh, I'm gonna be turning the warnings off using this uh, command. I'm also setting the options to display maximum columns so that we can see all the columns in our data set. So let's go ahead in installing and importing our libraries. Just one point I wanna make is that these are just the standard libraries which I have imported right now. As we move along the course, I'm gonna be importing more libraries and modules as and when required. Okay, we have finished uh, installing and importing various libraries. Next, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna set the background of the plots to white, white grid just to give a appealing look. Now coming to our first step, which is generating descriptors from smiles. Now I have already made many videos uh, regarding that and if you wanna check those out, I'm gonna be providing you the link in the notebook and you can find the link for the notebook uh, in the description below. So let's go ahead and load our data set which is in Delaney stored CSV file and I'm gonna be using pandas to load that and the data set would be stored in a variable called data. So let's go ahead and load this and have a look at our first five data points. In the data set you can see we have compound IDs, Meyer log solubilities, predicted log solubilities which they have predicted with their own model and smile strings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be grabbing these smile strings from this column and uh, I'm gonna be generating descriptors from that. So the first step is mm, uh, I'm uh, making an empty list called more and mole underscore list. Then I'm gonna be iterating through each smile in this smiles column. Uh, first we'll be generating molecular objects from these smiles and then we will be adding hydrogens. And then we will be generating 3D geometries from 
these molecular objects using all cam dot embed molecule method here. We need 3D geometries because I'm going to be generating both 2D and 3D descriptors. And then I'm going to be appending these transformed molecular objects into this list over here. And finally, I am going to be generating a column called mole, which has these molecular objects in it. So let's go ahead and run this and see our data set. So now you can see that apart from all these columns, we have mole column in our data set, which has the molecular objects in it. Now we can just uh, randomly visualize one of this molecule just to uh, see how they look. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called mole and I'm just randomly going to grab a molecule from this column. So let's just go ahead with 54th or 55th molecule, which is at index position 54. This is data here. And let's visualize this with the help of draw module and more to image method. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is our uh, 55th molecule. So you can go ahead and visualize mm, other molecules as well. Uh, now let's, let's move on to creating descriptors. So what I'm doing here is creating an instance of the calculator class. And since I want both 2D and 3D descriptors, I am keeping this parameter ignore underscore 3D to false. Uh, and since we are generating all the descriptors, so uh, this command here would uh, take care of that. Um, next, uh, what we are going to do here is use this calc instance uh, and call a pandas method on it, with, which would take argument as a panda series of these molecular objects. So let's quickly run this and see our data set. So finally, it has finished calculating the descriptors. It has taken us around five minutes and you can see all the descriptors here in our data set called all underscore desks. So we have all the 2D and 3D descriptors here. Now let us have a look at the shape of the data set. So we have 1144 data points uh, or molecules and 1826 2D and 3D descriptors. So what I'm going to do here is that uh, if, you, if you remember our initial data set called data had some uh, compound IDs, smiles and uh, Meyer log solubilities. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to create another data set called df underscore index and I'm going to be grabbing these compound IDs, Meyer log solubilities and smile so that we can concatenate it to uh, all these descriptor uh, data set that we just generated. So let's go ahead and do that. And in this uh, line of code, that's what I'm doing, just concatenating these two data sets, df underscore index and all underscore desk, which has all our descriptors in it. So this is our final data set, uh, which has compound ID, smiles. Uh, this would be our target, major log solubilities, and these would be our descriptors, which we are going to be using for generating uh, a machine learning model. And of course, you want to save this file either as an Excel or CSV file. So let me just go ahead and do that real quick. Now this data set has been stored as Delaney underscore modred Excel file. So you can download it on your computer. Next, if we want, we can load this data set. But in here, we don't need to because we have generated this data set in this notebook only. But in case uh, you are importing this file, uh, you can use this command over here to uh, load the data set. I am skipping this for now. And let's just move on to the data processing. This is a crucial part uh, in machine learning modeling studies where we need to find any missing values or non-numeric values. And uh, if there are any, we need to get rid of these. Uh, then uh, uh, we will see if there are any constant values uh, and uh, uh, if there are columns with constant values, we will just eliminate those columns. And in the end, uh, we will see if there are any um, correlated descriptors. So we will also uh, deal with those descriptors. So let me just go ahead and 
uh, visualize our uh, original data set here. So this is our data set with uh, compound IDs and smiles as our uh, indices and measured log solubilities as our target. And all these are descriptors here. Now what I'm gonna do here is that since we are gonna be manipulating the descriptors, uh, I'm just creating another data set uh, with the uh, name data. So I'm grabbing all the columns including and after column index number three, which is this one over here. So let's run this and uh, have a look at our uh, new data set. So this is our a new data set which has all the descriptors in it. Now let's just uh, see if there are any missing values. So I'm using is null function here and uh, I'm just using some uh, method twice on this uh, data frame. Now let me just show you what just dot is null function does. So in here you can see we have got uh, the boolean values true and false if it's false that means mm, the, uh, it's not none and if it's true that means uh, it's uh, it's a null value uh, so since this is a, a huge data set what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna sum all the null values and uh, what this would do is it would sum all the values in each column so we have uh, all the columns in here and uh, all these uh, missing values so uh, again, since we have 1826 different columns or descriptors, it would be difficult for us to go through each and every column. So I am again calling a sum method which would sum all the true values in here. So we have zero null values, but again, that does not mean that our data set is clean here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for any non-numeric values like any strings or any errors in it. And if, if you uh, have a look at our data set, if I scroll through uh, to the right, you can see that we have some string values or some kind of errors. Maybe the mod red library was not able to generate the descriptors for these molecules or uh, that these descriptors cannot be generated for these molecules. In either case, we need to get rid of these columns. So what I'm gonna do here is that I want the list of the column names with just numeric values in it. Also, there are some uh, descriptors over here which have Boolean values, for example, true and false, and I'm gonna be talking about these in a minute. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two lists here. One would contain the names of the columns which are numeric, and the another list called column underscore bool will contain the names of the columns which have boolean values. So this is an empty list over here. Then I'm running a for loop uh, uh, which would uh, screen through each column in the column names. And if the data type is object, it would just skip. We don't want object. Objects basically are string values. So we don't want to deal with that. But if the value is boolean, we are going to be storing that column name in this list over here column underscore bool using dot append method next if the column is neither object nor boolean uh, it would be stored in column underscore num and these columns would potentially contain uh, numeric descriptors so let's run this now let's have a look at the uh, length of our boolean as well as uh, numeric uh, column list so boolean has only two uh, descriptors in it the other list which has the names of the uh, numeric columns has 1271 descriptor names so mm, so let's just analyze uh, the column underscore boolean variable this has just two descriptors lipinski and coarse filter uh, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just show you first what these uh, column looks like so you can see we have true uh, and false values let me show you it has false values as well so we have two unique values true and false true basically means the that the molecule adhere to all the five rules of Lipinski whereas false indicate that one or all of these rules are not followed by the molecules and uh, mm, uh, regarding the other descriptor which is uh, ghost filter uh, 
again we have two values false and true so what i'm gonna do next here is i'm gonna be converting these true and false values to one and zero respectively and i'm gonna be mm, plotting a bar plot to see to see how many molecules have true and false values let's first run lipinski So um, for this descriptor here, we have more than 1000 molecules with value of one. And in here, uh, we have very less molecules with false values. And regarding um, Gauss filter, we have more of the values or molecules with uh, zero value or false and lesser number of uh, molecules with true uh, value. Next, I'm gonna slice our data set based on these uh, columns. So, so in our final data set, we want uh, numeric columns as well as columns containing Boolean values because that can impart uh, important information. And I have already shown you how you can convert these Boolean values into uh, numeric values like ones and zeros. So um, let's just slice our data set and have a look at uh, our shape so uh, in the new data set we have 1144 uh, data points and 1273 descriptors in the beginning we had more than 1800 uh, descriptors and we have truncated the data set to just 1273 descriptors by getting rid of the non-numeric values now our next step is getting rid of the columns containing constant values for example, let's say we have a column with just zeros in it or with just ones or twos in it with no variation. So that column is basically not gonna impact our solubility. So we must get rid of these columns. Now for that, I'm defining a function called remove underscore constant underscore values, which would take in argument as our data set. And it would return the list of columns with just one unique value. So in the next line of code, what I'm doing here is I am uh, uh, gonna be calling this function with a data set and we are gonna be storing the list of columns which we need to drop in drop underscore call variable. Next, uh, in these lines of codes, I'm just making uh, a new list of columns uh, which has all the columns names except that of the ones which we need to drop or except the ones which have constant values in this way we can slice our data set based on this new list here so let's run this and i'm going to be showing you our new data set as well as the length of the columns which we have dropped so this is our new data set and uh, the length is here uh, 1120 initially we had 1273 descriptors now we have truncated it to 1120 and if you want to see the length of the uh, on the number of descriptors which we have dropped is 153 so there are 153 columns uh, which had constant values now we are going to be taking this new underscore df data set and we are going to see uh, if there are any correlated descriptors in fact uh, this is the condition of the regression that no two descriptors should be highly correlated so what we are doing here is that if, if, uh, creating a function called correlation which would take in um, parameters as a data set and threshold. Uh, threshold is basically a value between 0 and 1. Now uh, in terms of correlation if the uh, correlation is closer to 1 that means the descriptors are highly correlated and if the value is closer to 0 that means they are non-correlated and uh, we want to get rid of the columns which are highly correlated so closer to one so you can mm, put a threshold as 0 0.70 or 0 0.80 or 0 0.90 that's totally up to you uh, so in uh, this uh, function what i'm first doing here is that i'm initializing an empty set to store the names of the correlated columns so this would be an empty set right now next i'm gonna be uh, calculating the correlation coefficients uh, uh, so this function core uh, would find out the correlation coefficient of each of these descriptors with every other descriptor in the data set and that would be stored as a matrix in core underscore matrix and the function then uses the nested loop here to iterate over the upper triangle of the correlation matrix 
this is done to avoid redundant calculations since correlation is a symmetric measure. So uh, this line of code checks if the absolute value of the correlation coefficient between columns i and g is j is greater than the specified threshold. Uh, if the condition is met, the name of the column uh, is obtained using uh, core underscore matrix dot column i and it is added to the set using dot add method. Finally, the function returns the set col underscore core containing the names of the columns that are highly correlated based on the previous threshold. So let's just create this column. Next, I'm going to be uh, using my data set here as an argument and I'm putting a threshold of 0 0.80 and I'm going to be calling this correlation function. And next, we will print the number of columns which we would be dropping. And finally, we will just drop these columns from our data set. So finally, we have uh, dropped uh, all these correlated descriptors and there are 839 descriptors which we have dropped. That means they were correlated with uh, each other or any other descriptors in the data sets. So um, now if we look at the shape, we are just left with 281 descriptors. Uh, uh, and let's just have a look at our new data frame. So this is the data set uh, which we have finally got. But now uh, one thing I want to mention here is that we still haven't dealt with the uh, descriptors containing Boolean values like Lipinski and Gauss filter. So what I'm just doing here is that uh, I am just converting these descriptors containing true and false values to zeros and ones but uh, like what we did in here while plotting these um, uh, descriptors. So it's the same syntax here just uh, use a dot as type method and which will take an uh, argument as int. So I am running that on both the descriptors Lipinski and Gauss filter and now uh, you know if you see we will have our new data set which would have Lipinski and Gauss filter as numerical descriptors rather than boolean. Next I again want to store this data set along with the smile strings uh, and our target which is uh, measure log of solubilities. So that's what I'm doing here in this line of code using pd.concat and this is the mm, data frame containing uh, compound ID smiles and measure log solubilities. Along with that I'm concatenating this uh, new data set here uh, along axis equal to one. So let's run this. So this would be our truncated data set and of course we want to store this uh, you know for further analysis. So this data set has been stored as Delaney underscore modred underscore truncated as a CSV file. Next we are going to be doing some data analysis. Again there are so many descriptors and we cannot analyze each and every descriptor. Uh, so let's just first start with our target which is measure log of solubilities and I am calling a describe method on it. So we have 1144 values. Um, we have the mean standard deviation here but uh, I think the point that we want to see here is that the values ranges from minus 11.6 to a maximum of 1.58. So what we want to do is uh, plot a distribution plot which I am plotting using matplotlib and using hist function. So let's run this. So we have pretty good normal distribution if not exactly normal but it is pretty close. So I think uh, we have a good um, data set in terms of our target. Next what I'm going to do here is that in terms of descriptors I am again going to be calculating the correlation coefficient of each of these descriptors with each other. So uh, let me just use this uh, core method on a data frame and see our final results. So all of these are the correlation coefficients uh, in the form of a matrix. So we can see here 
uh, these two are same so uh, obviously this is one correlation coefficient between abc and Meyer log of solubility is, is minus 0 0.58 and so on uh, what i'm gonna do here is just i'm just gonna be dealing with this column over here so since this is a data frame i am gonna be uh, slicing this column in here and i am gonna be sorting the values in the increasing order so let me just comment this one out and have a look at our data set so um, this is uh, the correlation coefficients of target uh, with the all the descriptors so let me just uh, grab the first you know four descriptors i'm gonna get rid of this row and i'm just gonna be dealing with these four descriptors and we are again gonna be renaming this uh, name to correlation underscore cof so that's uh, what we are doing in these lines of code so let's run this again and see our final data set so this is our kind of um, data set which has the correlation coefficients of our target with these four descriptors and these are the highly correlated descriptors as i have already sorted it at data set in the increasing order so uh, let's just uh, focus our attention on uh, these four descriptors for now and what i'm gonna do here is that uh, mm, i'm just gonna be visualizing um, these descriptors and their correlation coefficient uh, in the form of a bar plot so this is the bar plot of all these descriptors and this is the correlation coefficient so mm, what i've done here is that first created a figure and then added a subplot uh, to this figure and then i'm just using a bar method which would take in argument as x and y x and height x is our uh, index this one over here and height is the uh, correlation coefficients and rest i have just labeled x and y axis and as you can see here so filter it log s is the highly correlated descriptor here with a correlation coefficient value greater than 0.8 followed by peoe and then r and cg and in the last abc so let's just do one more thing here uh, let's just plot a scatter plot of all these descriptors with our uh, target which is Meyer log of solubilities and that's what i'm gonna be doing here again uh, it might sound daunting but it's not it's uh, really easy uh, let me just uh, break down this code for you in the first step i'm just creating a figure object let's just run this and I'm going to be showing you that this is just a figure object uh, which has uh, stored information about the figure that we are going to be generating uh, here the argument is four that means we want four figures and this is the fixed size 10 by 10 now what we are going to do is we are going to be creating um, a subplots in these figures using these four lines of code so what we are doing here is that um, two by two that means we want two columns and two rows and uh, we are just telling this uh, computer to generate the subplot at the index position one and here at index position two here at index position three and here at index position four so let's run this and see how uh, our subplots look like so these are empty plots right now right so this is at index position one corresponding to this this one uh, this is at index position 2 for this and so on now uh, if you just want to create a, a, a plot in the index position 1 over here uh, i'm just uncommenting this and i'm just plotting a scatter plot here using scatter method which takes in x and y x is our target and y is our you know filter i it log as descriptor which we have just shortlisted above and color i'm providing green and all this is labeling here so let's uh, first uh, plot this and then we are going to be plotting all of other descriptors so you can see here we have just plotted this one descriptor so let me just quickly uncomment these ones out and show you the final output so now you can see here uh, we have the scatter plots of all these descriptors um, we can see a pretty good trend here uh, this this has a positive correlation and uh, if you uh, according to 
modded website this filter it log s is basically a measure of log s which is aqueous solubility and you know uh, this is kind of calculated aqueous solubility and we can imagine that uh, that would have a good correlation with the log of solubilities which are the measured ones this peoe also has uh, some kind of negative correlation but i'm not really sure about all these points here and this peoe is a, a measure of castiger charges and uh, takes into account the surface area contribution our next descriptor over here r and cg it stands for relative negative charge so it takes into account all the negative charge of the molecule and it also has some kind of positive influence on the log of solubilities as the uh, relative negative charge increases the log of solubilities increases and in here abc stands for atom um, bond connectivity and uh, this also has some kind of negative correlation i am gonna end this session right here so in the next uh, series of videos, we are going to be doing dimensionality reduction and we are going to be uh, looking at some machine learning models to get some statistical insight into this data set. So stay tuned for more videos. That is all for now. Thank you for watching.